So hello everyone. If you will, if you would like to follow us with the on the tutorial and do the coding with us, please you can start um, um, getting ready. Uh, if you go to my GitHub account, there is the KubeCon EU 2023 Open Telemetry Kubernetes tutorial, or you can just scan these QR codes. Uh, there is README with with the setup, and so I would advise you to, to start looking at this and maybe create a Kubernetes cluster and deploy the observability backend that we'll be using. Uh, the QR code is as well on the slides that are uploaded to shut. Okay, so hello everyone and welcome to the tutorial for exploring uh, open telemetry metrics on Kubernetes. And this is essentially continuation from the last KubeCon in Amsterdam where we did a tutorial for kind of exploring all the open telemetry signals on uh, how to collect them on Kubernetes. And today we're gonna just focus on the metrics. Um, so my name is uh, Pavel, I'm principal engineer at Red Hat. I uh, maintain open telemetry operator and as well contribute the, to the open, te open telemetry project. I'm as well maintainer of the Jaeger project and uh, Grafana Tempo operator. Uh, and with me today is an amazing group of people. Uh, would you like to start the introductions? Do. Yeah, hi, my name is Bene. I work, uh, I contribute to the Open Telemetry project, and I also work at Red Hat together with Pavel. And... Hi, I'm Anthony Mirabella. Uh, I'm a senior engineer at AWS, and I work on Open Telemetry, um, mostly the collector and the Go uh, client libraries. Uh, hey, hi, I'm Anusha. I'm a software engineer at Apple. I'm, a, I'm also an open source uh, contributor. I work on Open Telemetry metrics and traces. Hello everyone, my name is Matej. I work as a software engineer at CoreLogix and I'm also open source contributor. Uh, I'm coming mostly from the Prometheus ecosystem. Recently I've been working more with open telemetry with the collector and operator. So that's my area of focus. Okay, thank you very much. So as you can see, we are all kind of you know, contributing to the ecosystem uh, and it's a, it's a tutorial and all the content is hosted on GitHub. Uh, so if you would like to follow what we do live on stage, please scan this QR code or go to uh, this URL or to my GitHub account and the repository is pinned uh, on, the, on the index page. If you will have any issues during the tutorial, you can just raise your hand and we will come and help you to, to resolve issues in, if you will know, obviously. Uh, and with that, I will jump to the to GitHub. And so what we prepared today is essentially you know a couple of sections we want to cover uh, related to metrics. Uh, we'll start with introduction to um, to how open telemetry metrics are designed, and Tony will, will talk about that. Then we will uh, have a live demo. We will instrument an application with the open telemetry API and SDK for metrics, uh, kind of manually. We will you know, initialize the API and SDK. 
and then we will compare it to the automatic instrumentation and we'll see how that uh, makes the whole instrumentation easier. After that, we will deploy it on Kubernetes with the open telemetry uh, operator. We'll deploy then the collector and use the instrumentation CR. Uh, and after that, we will focus on uh, kind of different topics. Uh, we will explore how we can use open telemetry with Prometheus, uh, you know, how we can replace parts of the Prometheus with open telemetry collector to collect Prometheus metrics. And after that, we will look at how we can use open telemetry to collect Kubernetes infrastructure metrics. Uh, and the last topic is correlation, where we will explore how we can correlate metrics with traces uh, and logs. So the first thing what we need to do for the tutorial is to do the setup. Um, and we will need a Kubernetes cluster. So if you have one, you can just use that one or um, otherwise there are instructions to use the kind cluster or you can use Minikube as well. That will work just fine. Um, so you should end up with you know, running Kubernetes cluster and kubectl installed on your machine. And after that, we will deploy third manager that is required by the open telemetry operator. When you run this command to deploy third manager, please wait a couple seconds, maybe, or even half a minute, because it takes for the third manager to, to start and initialize properly. And after that, you can deploy the open telemetry operator which will essentially you know, install the latest release. And after that, we will deploy our backend for observability data that is using Prometheus with enabled OTLP ingestion and exemplars. And for tracing, uh, we will use Jaeger and the backend as well contains Grafana deployment, um, which as a last step, we'll port forward it to our host. Just to get an idea who is gonna do the demo with us, please raise your hand. Okay, cool, that's good. Yeah, just to, we already have this set up on our machine, so we will not be doing this first part, setting up the cluster. So this is already there, and I would suggest you can port forward to Grafana and keep this running in the background or just keep it open because we have some links for the, the dashboards that will expect Grafana to be on the localhost 3000. So if you want all of this to work, um, yeah, leave it open or leave it, leave it uh, port forwarded. I still see people typing. Maybe you can give us some indication if you are done with the setup. Maybe you can raise your hand so we, we know that some people are done. So one, two. I think we can, because the next section, Anthony will introduce the data model, so we will still have some time to install and go through, through the steps. So no stress. Next Pavel. Um, oops. Uh, the fun of learning to use somebody else's computer. How they have it set up differently from you. I think I need to click that. There we go. Um, so I've got a brief presentation I'm going to do to talk about what are metrics, um, what the open telemetry metric model looks like, and how you can. Uh, utilize the OpenTelemetry API and SDK to produce metrics. Um, so first off, what are metrics? Um, metrics are, at some level, a pre-aggregated time series data. Um, got some feedback. 
pre-aggregated time series data that represent observations of numeric quantities and associated attributes. Now, that's, that's a, a big mouthful, it's a lot of words there, so I'll try to break that down a little bit um, and talk about each of those constituent parts. Uh, first, observations, what, what are those? Um, there are two types of observations that we can make, synchronous and asynchronous. Um, synchronous observations are when an event of interest happens uh, and we can observe a value related to that event directly. So this may be something like, how long did your HTTP request take? Or um, how many bytes were in that request body? Um, maybe you made a query to a data store and you've got a counter of how many queries you've made to that data store. Um, so these are things that happen, you, you observe that directly when it happens. Um, conversely, asynchronous observations are things that happen not necessarily when the value changes, um, but when you want to know what the current state of that value is. Um, so this is more useful for something like how many items are in a queue for processing. Maybe you don't track every item coming and going, but on a periodic basis you ask how big is the queue. Um, or how much memory is allocated to a process. You're not tracking every allocation, but you know, you know I've got five megabytes now, I've got 10 megabytes, and, and you can kind of see that changing over time. Um, what's the temperature in the room? Like all of you people in the room are probably raising the temperature here, and we can periodically check what that is, but we don't know every time that changes because it's a continuous value. Um, the next part of that is numeric quantities. Um, metrics deal with numbers. Um, it, they can be integers, they can be floating points, but numbers are really the thing that are of interest to us here. It doesn't really make sense to observe red, right? Um, but we can uh, observe that we've got 99 red balloons. Um, and so that's your metric there is the, the name is balloons. You've got the value 99 and some attributes like its color is red. Um, and then that, that takes us to the last part of that, which is attributes. Um, so attributes can help provide context for understanding that observation that you've made. Uh, if you are counting HTTP requests, maybe you want to know what was the URL or what was the status code. Was it successful or was it an error? You might want to have different values for those. Which data store did you query or you know, what color was your balloon? Mine are red, maybe yours are a different color. Um, then aggregation is the, the final important part of metrics. Um, especially when we're doing synchronous observations, there can be a lot of observations. You don't necessarily want to report every single one of them to a data store. So every HTTP request, you're not necessarily going to want to report that to Prometheus or to some other data store and say, hey, I had another request. You will, you know, say on a minutely basis, ask how many requests were there in the last minute or how many requests have there been uh, in total. Um, and there are various different types of aggregations uh, that you can use. Um, a sum is just adding up all of the, the values that you've observed. Um, you could take a, a last value, which is, you know, what was the last thing you saw? Maybe a, a value that's constantly changing, uh, but you only want to know what it currently is. Um, and then there are histograms, which are uh, representations of distributions of data. So you can have some more information about what types of values you have observed without necessarily needing to keep every value. In open telemetry, there are three data models um, that are um, not necessarily always represented in the API um, or the, the interfaces you use, but these are kind of conceptual models and um, states that the data will flow through as it goes from your application to your data store. Um, so what I just described with observations is kind of the event model, where each observation is an event that happens and you record the attributes and, and what, uh, what thing you're observing that then can get translated into a streaming model um, in, in OTLP, which is a representation of a set of aggregated events um, that is easy to send over a network. Um, and then finally, your, your backend, uh, whether that's Prometheus or some other data store, will turn that into its time series model that it will store for later query and analysis. The OpenTelemetry Metrics API and SDK is, um, these are the ways that you interact with OpenTelemetry and record these observations and get them down that pipeline of, of those data models to your, uh, your eventual data store. Um, it starts at the top with a meter provider. Um, this is the entry point to the API. Uh, your application will probably have one of these. 
Um, you may have more for, for some reasons, but typically you'll have one. Um, and in, in the API, uh, the, the meter provider just gives you the ability to create a meter, which is the, the next level of interactions. Uh, but in the SDK, this is where your application will configure things like what resources are attached to your, uh, to all of the metrics that are produced by this meter provider, or how do you want it processed? Which aggregations do you want to use for specific metrics? Uh, and where do you want that data to go? Which exporters will it use? Uh, the meter itself is, is responsible for creating instruments. Um, and instruments are the things that actually record observations. Um, so a meter, you will typically have one per library. Um, so if you've got an HTTP library, it will have its own meter, which might associate some information relevant to that library to all of the instruments that it creates. And you might have a separate one for your database library that associates some different attributes to all of the, the observations for your database. Um, so I'll talk a little bit about the various types of instruments that we have. Um, I mentioned earlier that there are synchronous and asynchronous observations, and that carries forward into instruments as well. Um, so synchronous, uh, as I said, allow for direct observations uh, of a value related to work that's happening. Um, and asynchronous uh, allows you to observe something that might be changing outside of the context of the work, but will influence that. Um, or is related to the whole thing that you're observing. Um, they are very similar to synchronous instruments, except they add a callback parameter, so you can provide a function that the SDK will invoke when it wants to know the current value of that instrument or the thing that that instrument is measuring. Um, and so this, this callback is invoked when it wants to record. So for instance, if you've got a Prometheus exporter, when Prometheus comes and hits the slash metrics endpoint to scrape, that data, um, it will then invoke this callback and say, what is, what is the value of the, um, you know, the, the current memory state or something like that. Um, so the, the types of instruments that we have, um, we have a counter, um, which is probably the, the simplest kind of instrument. Um, these track monotonically increasing values. Uh, that means the, the value only ever stays the same or goes up, it can never go down. Um, this is important for some metric systems that expect that property of counters that they're looking at so that they can effectively make assumptions about uh, those, those data. Um, it defaults to a sum aggregation. So if you observe a bunch of different values, it will add them all up uh, and report the, the sum of those values. Um, so if we observe here one, four, two, and three, we'll get the aggregated value 10 out at the other end. Um, and this also has an asynchronous variant um, if there's a situation where you need that property. Um, if you don't or can't use a, a monotonic counter, um, there's an up-down counter, uh, which as the name implies can go up and it can go down. Um, and this works just the same, um, but here we can see if we observe a negative two instead of a two, um, we'll end up getting the value six out. Um, this also has an asynchronous variant. Then we've got a gauge. Um, this is asynchronous only, um, and these are useful for tracking things that, um, you know, as with most asynchronous instruments, don't really change in the context of some specific identifiable, act identifiable activity, um, but maybe um, changes continually and you just want to know what's the current value or what was the last value that was seen. Um, so this is useful for something like memory usage or items in a queue. And here, if we observe those same values, one, four, two, and three, the result is three, because that was the last value we saw. Um, there's some experimental work happening for a synchronous gauge, um, but that's not yet uh, available for general use. And then finally, we've got the histograms. Um, there are two types of those, um, explicit bucket histograms, where you say, here are the boundaries of the buckets that I want you to put all of the data in the distribution into, uh, and then an exponential histogram, which will try to automatically fit the bucket boundaries to the data that you're providing it. Um, these can include a lot of additional statistical summary type information. Um, so you might get the, the minimum, maximum, sum, and count of all of the observations that you have. Uh, so we can see here that if we ever observe those same four values, one, four, two, and three, um, then we get a much larger set of data where it tells us the, the minimum value we saw was one, the maximum was four, the sum was 10, uh, and the count was four. 
So we can get a lot of the same information that we would get from a counter, um, but also a lot more information if we need to know, um, you know, was, was the, the average really high or was it really low? Um, whereas a counter just tells you what was the total. You know, maybe you've got a bunch of outliers that are bringing up your total and you won't necessarily know that from a counter. Uh, okay, and I think that takes us through all of the instruments. And Pavel, am I heading off to you again? Uh. Yeah, thank you, Anthony. And we'll continue with the uh, third part of the tutorial. Are you ready with the setup? Um, it seems like, yeah. So actually in this, set, in this step, we'll not use the Kubernetes. Uh, so if you're not ready yet, it's, it's okay. So what we're gonna do right now is to instrument our application that we are hosting in the repository. Um, so let me explain what the application is actually doing before we jump into the instrumentation part. Um, it's a simple microservice polyglot uh, application that contains three microservices, front-end, back-end one, back-end two, front-end written in Node.js, back-end one in Python, and back-end two in Java. Um, essentially, um, the logic is to play a game, roll a dice. The, the front-end will ask back-end one to roll dice for, for one player, and backend two for the second player. And then each backend replies with a number, in this case, three and six, and front end decides which one is higher and prints the result to the, to the console. So we need to instrument this application to get metrics, right? And there are two approaches to instrumentation. The simplest one is to the simplest one is to use the API and SDK uh, manually, which means you, know, you will pull those libraries into your application and, and you use the APIs. And the second approach is to use the automatic instrumentation. Um, each of these has benefits uh, and, um, and, and some problems. The manual instrumentation is great when you need to have good control over what, what you do. On the other hand, you might forget to instrument important parts of the application. And the automatic instrumentation is something, you know, that you can set up very easily, but on the other hand, might consume more resources. Um, and you, you just don't control it, right? So you will just get what is, uh, what is prepared for you. So we'll start with the manual instrumentation uh, on the front end application. So I'll change directory to front-end. I'm sorry? It's too small. Yeah, could we ask the room technicians to dim the lights, please? Cool, thank you. Is it better now? <laughs> make it, could you please make it bigger as well? Can you please make it? Okay, cool. <laughs> we are Linux users and this is Meg Machine, so we are confused. Um, but anyways, uh, so I'll change directory to frontend and I will run npm install to install the packages. If you don't have npm on your, or Node.js environment, you can as well use the Docker container, uh, which, you know, the steps are just below. And then I will use npx to, to run the index, which um, 
the npx the node daemon will watch for changes on the file so i don't have to you know restart the application manually and so the app is running so now i can access the port 4040 it should be let me see no it's actually 4000 and I'm getting internal server error, which is correct because the front end needs two backends which are not deployed, uh, so that's fine. So what we're gonna do right now is to, is to instrument it, and you can find good guidelines on the official open telemetry documentation. The link is on the readme. Uh, and you can simply paste the code from there into the indexed file uh, and initialize the, the, the open telemetry API and SDK. And our goal is to use the console exporter that will print the metric in the application console. So switch to, to the app. And so this is the index. And as you can see, it's initializing you know, HTTP framework and then um, you know, configuring the index endpoint and there is the business logic then. So what we need to do now is to open the Open telemetry documentation, which takes some time. Are you able to load the page? Okay, it's it's there. Um, and here you can you know choose between TypeScript and JavaScript. And there you have the instructions how to load the, the packages for the instrumentation. In this case, we need to load the Open Telemetry API, SDK, and the instrumentation for Node.js, right? So if we just, just use the API and SDK, um, it, will, it will not instrument the, the Node.js, meaning that we would need to write more code to get metrics for, uh, and traces as well for the um, for any invocations of the Node.js. And here we, we see the code. You can just simply you know, uh, copy it and paste it to, uh, to our index. Um, what I prepared as well is a second file called instrument, which essentially contains the content from the, um, from the web page. And you can load it by uncommenting this, this line. And yeah, it just you know, configures the API and SDK and configures the console exporter. So I'm gonna save it and then create requests. And as you can see, the index is already using the Open Telemetry API, right? Uh, but if we don't initialize the SDK, we will not get any telemetry data, right? Because the API will just be uh, no operation. And what I have done here is I use the meter as Anthony was talking about as the main uh, kind of entry point to the metrics API. And from the meter, I created a couple of counters. First one is the request counter, which counts the requests on the, um, the root API. And if I go back to console, I should see the metric uh, printed uh, in the application con console. It takes some time before, because the SDK is, is batching those metrics and it's uh, reporting them you know, periodically after some time.
Yeah, I think I did that. I can try again. It was reloaded. Ah, no, index was not saved. You're right. Control S. Cool. Uh, I need to create more requests. Thank you very much. Yeah, it takes a couple seconds to metrics uh, get reported. And we should see something like this in the console that is on the readme. And okay, so this is the um, the output. So this is the kind of the simplest way to debug your instrumentation is working, because it kind of doesn't require any uh, any other service to be running on the host. And next step, we're gonna run Prometheus in Docker that has enabled. Uh, OTLP of write receiver. So uh, it, it's kind of a new feature that was added to the Prometheus. I'm going to run the Prometheus in a separate console. And I need to now change the code in the instrument, JS to use the OTLP HTTP exporter. And I need to specify the URL. And Prometheus exposes OTLP under API v1 OTLP prefix. You know, the API v1 is the, you know, the prefix for all Prometheus APIs, and then they just added the OTLP suffix for the OTLP HTTP API. So I'm gonna save the file. And again, refresh the application to Again, create some requests they, that will create metrics, and then I should see metrics in my Prometheus. So the Prometheus is uh, on the port 1990. Are you able to run Prometheus? It seems like the network is very slow for us. try to switch to mobile data internet, which might be faster. Or 
کنم میشه Yeah, sorry about that. Maybe in the meantime we can check. So who is still with us? Who is still following? Do you guys have uh, your clusters installed? Show of hands, who is still following and have their cluster ready with the operator and those ability backend? Okay, couple hands. I said it's not not the best format. There is a lot of people here, but if you have issue and you want to discuss with us, feel free to raise your hand. We can, someone can come and take a look in the meantime. So yeah, this, this part, we're working with Docker on our local machine, but soon we will move on to the actual part where we'll use the cluster. So you still have a bit of time to, to prepare for the, for the main portion of the tutorial.
So it seems like the Prometheus, for some reason, <laughs> uh, couldn't be pulled. But the next step, um, all, optionally, we can use the Open Telemetry Collector that has the debug exporter and will print the, the metrics to the standard output. Uh, so we're going to use that. We need to make the changes in the code, in the instrument. We need to change the exporter from HTTP to gRPC. We could as well use the HTTP one, uh, but we, you know, for the tutorial, we decided to use uh, the gRPC one for the collector and HTTP for the Prometheus. So I'm going to save the changes and refresh the application to create uh, metrics. And again, we need to wait because the SDK is, uh, is reporting metrics periodically, uh, but we should see them coming to the collector soon. So the debug exporter that we are using on the collector is another useful feature in the collector that um, we can use to see if the telemetry data is coming from our process. Uh, so when we start with instrumentation, I would recommend you to use the console exporter in the SDK and then deploy collector and see if the data is coming to your collector. So in this case, we see the output, uh, it's different than we saw in the application. In this case, we see as well the resource attributes uh, that you know, describe the process reporting the data and then the individual measurements, which is the request counter in our case. Okay, so this was the manual instrumentation. As, as you can see, uh, you need to pull in API and SDK packages to your, to your application. You need to make code changes and then recompile and redeploy to um, get telemetry working. And now we're gonna take a look at the auto instrumentation. Uh, Bene, could you please come here? So Bene will continue with the next part. We need to do a quick microphone change or you hold. Okay, perfect. Um, quickly out where we are. Ah, so, yeah, what we have seen, what Pavel uh, showed us was more or less how to instrument up our application manually. So therefore we need to know what we not wanna know about our application. Um, there are other ways in the JS contract repository or for other languages as well. You will find um, predefined uh, uh, some, yeah, uh, packages where you can then instrument things automatically like an entire framework, for example, Gorilla Go MUX, which automatically gives you traces, a trace support or a metric support for Go. And there is uh, another option, which is the auto instrumentation. We will have a look here with the backend service. This auto instrumentation is available for multiple languages. So for example, for Java, Python, .NET, it's always a bit different what they support and what they do not support. And since Java is well supported, we go with this here. So what we do now is, or what we have seen previously, uh, we needed to configure the SDK, we needed to instrument stuff. We can go with Java and download this Java um, agent itself, so that we can quickly copy this. Well, let me try to copy. So with the support that Ben mentioned, um, some of the agents, like. Most of them, all of them support mm -hmm. tracing, but not all of them report metrics as well. Fortunately, the Java agent supports metrics. Uh, it reports some metrics for uh, some frameworks, not all of them, but for some. Okay, this. Uh, where is it? Yeah, I just try to type. Is it right? No. So, so what Benner will show you, you know, how to use the agent uh, locally. Uh, 
but um, in production, you would usually um, embed the Java agent directly to your Docker container uh, or inject it um, uh, to your environment dynamically, as we will see on Kubernetes. So I'm running here uh, a container, which is, has Java installed because the machine doesn't. Um, so it may be an option for you. And what we see next is more or less, I like, will quickly go here of the, over this configure point. You will find all the configuration details on the uh, open telemetry page. We just load this Java agent and then we spe uh, specify some environment variables. So in the first one, we go with the logging OTLP uh, exporter so that we see our uh, metrics reported to the console. We just um, disable logs and we don't, also don't care about traces in this step. And then we finally execute the a jar, which is the backend. I pre-compiled this, so it's part of the repository. So in theory, we should be able to just execute it as soon as it's downloaded. Yeah. I hope this goes a bit better or quicker on your machine. There is actually a smarter option. We already have a prepared container that we use afterwards in kind, um, which would contain the, bind, uh, the jar so that we just need to set the environment variables. But I don't want to change this now. Console output is kind of small if you could make it bigger. Oh. Ah, we stopped the uh, Prometheus container. This should run in the oh. Command T, yes. That's the wrong. Quickly go back to this one. Why is it downloading it again? Second time. Okay, so this should be up and running, and then we try this here again. Perfect. Control C or Command V? I'm able to access. Oh. Maybe we need to change to application backend two. It seems the repository is not up to date. download a bit more stuff. So there is also the option to build it directly.
So, so Ben, how, how do you tell the Java runtime to, to load the agent? Uh, yeah, so basically, um, we set the Java tool options, and then the Java runtime will do the rest for us. It will load this first, and it's still. Ah, I, I see what it's the problem. We download it. Oh, where is the open telemetry agent jar? And see if we did a typo. We did not. So now we can call the backend a few times to roll the dice. In case I'm able to copy. Ah. So this is one. I think there should be more numbers, but yeah. So in here, we see that we rolled the dice a few times, and after a while, so after the um, the application will flush it. And we should see it on the console itself. And this will then also include um, some Java runtime metrics, so for example, about the garbage collector and so on. Um, I think we need to skip the Prometheus part because of time issues. We spend a lot of on downloading. Maybe we can quickly, if JQ is installed, JQ installed. Oh. Copy. So here, now we see it a bit, more, a bit better. We see that we get here, for example, CPU utilization and so on. And yeah, you can browse through it, and it contains quite a lot. And you can also configure what you want to see and what you don't want to see. Um, so in theory, we can also just uh, switch the environment variables a bit. So this time, we remove the logging OTOP exporter. So then it will, by default, use the OTOP exporter. We specify an open telemetry matrix endpoint. This is the Prometheus instance where we enabled OTLP. And um, then we need to specify the protocol type. So in our case, we want to transmit this using HTTP. And uh, here's the exporter explicitly installed, and we just disabled the other ones. And then it's the same process. So this process, uh, this, oh wait, yeah, this links into the Prometheus instance in Denia. You should see it there. So you see it here on the screenshot. Um, technically, this also works for Node.js, so you can also play around with this. So I added here this optionally. Okay. Yeah, you can take it. So in the next section, we would like uh, to give a, you a short overview about the um, Open Telemetry Operator, what it's used for, and how it makes life easier on Kubernetes. Um, the Open Telemetry Operator is basically a component which delivers currently two. Uh, CRDs. One is the instrumentation CRD and the open time to collector CRD. The instrumentation CRD is used to configure the SDKs and also inject the SDKs. So previously we did download this jar file and this is something the operator can do for us. And uh, so now we want to do exactly the same on Kubernetes. Therefore we deploy the entire application. Or maybe just let it just click on the... Yeah. If you hold it. Here and then. So now we should see. Yeah, so this is the part where you can already follow, follow us, and basically just copy and paste the commands, and it should apply the correct manifests on your on your cluster. So in this case, we're deploying the the same application we've seen previously in Docker. We're now doing the same in Kubernetes. Yes, and next we go with the 
um, auto instrumentation CRD. So we have first maybe quick a look how this looks like. Let me open this a bit bigger. So it's basically the uh, instrumentation CRD, which has uh, the Open Telemetry API here. And we configure the exporter. This will be, or this is the default path where the OP Open Telemetry metrics or all the signals get exported. In our case, we export uh, traces to the Jaeger collector. And uh, next, we configure the same environment variables that we did before. And we use a different endpoint, in our case, the Prometheus instance, which is running on Kubernetes to ship the metrics there. So let's quickly deploy this, and then nothing should happen. Because if we want to make use of it, we need to modify the pod spec. So um, let's have first a look on backend two. So what we see here is the container somewhere in the spec. We have the container. We have the image specified, almost no environment variables. I don't see one, not a single one. And also with the annotations, we have here the Prometheus scrape matrix, but this, this is different. Um, so what we need to set up is now, or what we need to do is more or less just add an annotation and tell the open telemetry um, operator that it should inject the Java SDK and it should also configure the variables that we configured on top. So this is what we do next. Since the deployment is patched, the pod should restart. We just verify this. Oh, maybe it just get the details again. Yeah. So it restarted. Ah, there it's 20 seconds. Ah, so, yeah, now we see the difference. So now there is an init container, which is using this image here with the Java auto instrumentation in this specific version. And what it basically does, it uses uh, the CP command to copy the Java agent into, can we see this here somewhere? I thought. Terminated. I don't know how to search the terminal here on the MacBook. That's difficult. Ah, here we see the command from the init container. We see that it's copying the Java agent on the specific path, which is the default path where the Java agent then gets picked up. But it's also specified here in the environment variables. When we see here, we set the Java tool options, which is then using this path. We also set the other. Um, parameters that we want to transmit metrics using HTTP, and we also target the Jaeger collector to uh, transmit the traces. It will automatically also set some resource attributes so that we know where it's coming from. Um, in case we have things manually instrumented, um, which you can try, there's a step in the tutorial from previously, um, we only need to inject the SDK configuration. In this case, there will be no init container, nothing gets injected because then the application is expected to deliver all of this. So what we can do now is forward Prometheus here directly because it's the easiest way to collect or see the metrics. And go to the Prometheus dashboard. So usually also here it takes a second until uh, this one. some data arrives. Maybe we can in the meantime check the logs if Everything works as expected. Uh, here, and then we should see on the top no errors. You 
Gen. Okay, and we are running a bit out of time, so I'm, trust me, it worked on my machine. Um, does it work for someone else, or does someone else trouble to see the metrics there? So I expect it works for everyone, expect me. Yeah, so basically we should then see the metrics that we have seen on the console previously, um, transmitted there, and also we can forward the Jaeger, or maybe we can check this quickly. So here we have, okay, traces are arriving. It's, it's super strange, and here we can see how things worked out. Hmm. One last try. Still nothing. Okay, so as we can see, we see traces, and in theory, we also should see the metrics. Um, so what we do next is we will have a short look on the Open Telemetry Collector. This is more or less a short recap so that we're all on the same page, because the Open Telemetry Collector comes now, or will be become a bit more important. Uh, you will see how we yeah, collect basically metrics then also with the, from the Prometheus ecosystem. Um, so what is the collector? The collector can be divided into, let's say, three main parts. Um, they're a bit more, but um, it consists of two. It consists out of a receiver, a processor, an exporter, and there are also connectors. The um, receivers can be, for example, a Prometheus receiver, which scrapes metrics from um, our applications, or the OTLP receiver, which is just listening on a port and waits for new data that arrives. The uh, processing can take place to enrich our data, filter our data, or just batch the data to save some overhead. And then finally, we can export it to different data stores. Um, so there are options for different protocols again on the wire, like uh, remote write or OTLP directly. Oop. So to quickly show how you how such a configuration looks like, um, the Open Telemetry Collector is configured with a simple YAML file. Um, we see the parts that we discussed previously, the receiving part. In our case, now we specify an open telemetry receiver that accepts gRPC on a specific port. Um, we also specified the batch processor, and ex as an exporter, we use the uh, debug exporter, which directly prints things to console. Then we have the service section, and there we can um, compile our service pipelines. So we can have, currently we have one for metrics, but we can also have multiply, for example, for multiply targets. Uh, or different processing for different metrics. And uh, we also can there specify pipelines for traces and logs. Um, yeah, I think that's almost it. And Maciej will now show you how to use this on Kubernetes. You can assist me. Yeah. So let's do it. Let's finally deploy the collector on the cluster, what we've all been waiting for. So as you've seen, uh, Bene introduced uh, the custom resource called instrumentation, which we use on the application side to instrument it. On the other side, we have the open telemetry collector custom resource that represents uh, how the collector should be configured and deployed, and uh, how, so how the operator will behave uh, or how the operator will manage the collector instance. It's a quite um, quite simple or quite, many of the parameters in the spec are quite self-explanatory, so you can see some of the typical fields that you will see in other CRs, such as image, number of replicas, we have auto-scaling there, uh, you can define ports, environment variables, etc. These are These are quite common, I think, so this is how our CR looks like, it's quite simple. We just pin the image to the, I think the latest collector image, 88, 
which is now not showing. Um, and here we have the configuration, which we took over from what Benny was showing. So it's a very simple configuration where we have a receiver with the OTLP protocol. Um, we will batch the data coming in and then export it with the so-called debug exporter, which is just a simple exporter to dump the metrics or the, date, the telemetry data to your standard output. And here we put it all into a pipeline for metrics. So what we should see once the data come in through the OTLP receiver, we should see them on our standard output. There are a couple more uh, interesting parameters that you can configure in that, in that custom resource that you should get familiar yourself with. Uh, one that's specific to the open telemetry collector, it's the mode. So this defines the deployment mode of collector. What we mean by this is how the collector should be deployed. Should this be deployment, daemon set, stateful set, sidecar? All of these are valid options. So for example, if you're using the collector as an agent, you want to run it on every node, you would set this to a daemon set. If you want to use it as a kind of gateway, you would deploy it uh, as a deployment, uh, and so on. We will see some uh, examples of, of use of this parameter later. Upgrade strategy, so the operator can also upgrade the collector for you automatically. This is done by default. Target allocator is another specialty that you might want to get familiar yourself with if you're using uh, the collector to scrape Prometheus targets. So this is a optional component that uh, makes it easier for you to integrate with uh, Prometheus and to, to scale, but we'll also see more of this hopefully in the section five. Lastly, service account, which you can also specify. This is also important when we're talking about uh, Kubernetes infrastructure metrics, as we will see the collector needs appropriate permissions to, to be able to collect certain, certain data. So uh, it's important to have this set up correctly as well. So finally, let's apply our CR here and check that it was, first let's check that the CR was created. So as you can see, we have some information here as we wanted deployment mode, version 88, et cetera, image. And also let's check that the collector is actually running. Yes, it's there. So we have the expected output. And now let's look at some metrics in the collector. But there are no metrics. Um, so we're still missing, still missing one more step. As we've seen previously in the instrumentation that was introduced uh, by Bene, we were sending the metrics, or we wanted to send the metrics to the uh, Prometheus instance. Uh, in this case, we will finally send them to the actual, to the collector uh, that will put, I'll put them on the debug. So this is similar to what you've seen, what Pavel demonstrated on Docker. Now we're doing the same in, uh, in finally in, in Kubernetes. So let's apply. We have, we have uh, maybe let's show it quickly. We have adjusted the instrumentation. So now instead of sending it to Docker, we just send it to the collector itself. And we also here specify that we do not wish to export traces and logs. So we should see only metrics in this case. If we go back and try to apply this instrumentation, there's one caveat where we should uh, we need to restart the applications in order to uh, for the instrumentation to take effect. So I will simply delete the pods in the tutorial application namespace and they should be restarted with the desired, let's watch them for a bit. They should restart with the desired um, instrumentation. Maybe let's check what the backend tool is doing. If it might take a minute to might take a minute for it to show us 
some metrics. so far but there should be also console export right it looks like the application is working let's see if the demo gods will be in our favor now so we want observability backend and we want to look at the auto basic collector. Yes, it worked. So finally, we see some metrics. Uh, as you can see, previously we've been, we come up to this line, so we had some initial, initialization messages. Now we're seeing finally some metrics coming in. They are being printed to the standard output, as I suggested. And we can see resource attributes. So we're seeing the name of the container. Uh, and so on, and finally some, some metrics like server, request duration, and so on. So this is a very, very basic uh, example. We should now have an understanding of how instrumentation and open telemetry custom resources work, and now we'll move on to a more uh, realistic and more complex example of how we can use this for collecting Prometheus metrics, which uh, Anusha will show us. They also want the... Yeah. Okay. I don't have... Okay. All right. Uh, so uh, now let's talk about the uh, collecting Prometheus uh, metric section. We only have uh, 20 minutes left so and three more sections. So I'm going to skip and uh, co only cover the important parts. Uh, so on a, a high level, uh, this section, uh, we'll be talking through migrating, uh, talking through the steps of migrating from Prometheus to open telemetry for collecting metrics. Um, and after that, we'll dive deep into how do we scale the collector instances with a component called target allocator. And after that, we will see, uh, we'll talk about the interoperability between Prometheus and OTLP formats where we'll be explaining how do we uh, ingest Prometheus and output it in OTLP. Finally, we'll also see uh, some of the uh, format compatibility uh, challenges and limitations that we need to be uh, aware of uh, during the migration. Uh, so prereqs, um, in the previous step, we also have the back into application, uh, which was manually instrumented to generate uh, Prometheus metrics, and those metrics are being uh, exposed on a HTTP endpoint, which we'll be scraping in this section. And our Prometheus backend has been set up, uh, is, is up and running on the Kubernetes uh, kind cluster, and we have the remote write enabled. Um, I'll be uh, skipping through the overview. Um, uh, so the first thing that we need to uh, uh, analyze is like we need to actually look at your look into our existing Prometheus configuration and identify uh, the scraping mechanism that has been set up. So there are two ways uh, target discovery can be done in Prometheus. Uh, one is uh, the first one is uh, a more traditional way using scrape configs. Um, so when when using scrape configs, we'll have all the targets and the target endpoints specified in the Prometheus uh, configuration file itself. Here is the sample Prometheus configuration file um, uh, where we can see we have the alerting, recording rules, scrape configs, and remote write uh, specified here. Uh, so the next thing that we need to do is uh, when we, uh, before we port this configuration over to Hotel Collector is just pick up the scrape configs from this section. The other advanced features like alerting, recording rules are uh, not supported by co the collector. Uh, they can still be set up on your uh, Prometheus backend. Uh, so we pick up the scrape config from uh, the Prometheus section, and the next thing that we need to do is uh, escape the dollar characters uh, in the scrape config sections. The reason, uh, collector today supports environment variable substitution, uh, which uh, means it interprets the dollar characters in your scrape config as the uh, uh, starting of your environment substitution. So in order for us to, for the uh, values to be replaced by the environment variables, we need to be escaping our, uh, escaping the dollar signs uh, in the configuration. So if you have metric relabel uh, configs or relabel configs in your scrape config, make sure to uh, escape the dollar characters. So here is how our uh, uh, configuration looks like after the exclusions and escaping. So if you see here, we have the dollar characters escaped. The second uh, method, uh, 
Um, the second uh, method is using the service monitor, which is more of a dynamic way uh, for discovering targets in Prometheus. Um, so when creating the service monitors, uh, typically in a Kubernetes cluster, uh, we specify the desired configuration, uh, desired scraping behavior using service labels. Service monitor uses these service labels to kind of uh, uh, dynamically discover the services and the targets to scrape. Um, this is more, you know, flexible and scalable way to uh, to do target discovery in in, in a Kubernetes setting. Um, so, in order for us to uh, create the service monitors, uh, we need the uh, uh, Prometheus operator CRDs installed. So, we'll go ahead and install those CRDs. Okay. So, there you go. So, the CRDs are installed. Um, so the next step is setting up the open telemetry collector itself. Just a quick recap. So what we looked at so far is uh, we looked at two uh, approaches to uh, scraping or, uh, or discovering the uh, targets in Prometheus. And now we'll see how do we set up our open telemetry collector for these two discovery mechanisms. And we also have seen, uh, we also have the uh, Prometheus configuration, scrape configuration ready to be ported. Um, so, uh, uh, so we, uh, the way we set up the collector is uh, Open Telemetry offers a Prometheus receiver and a couple of exporters for us to port over to uh, to the Open Telemetry collector. Uh, so st uh, let's start with looking at the Prometheus receiver. Uh, a Prometheus receiver uh, essentially is a minimal drop-in replacement for the Prometheus server to scrape metrics. So under the hood, it is just a wrapper over the same Prometheus scrape, scrape configuration code. Um, so it supports the full set of Prometheus scraping service dis discovery and relabeling configurations. Um, we have a couple of exporters. One is a pull-based exporter and the other is a push-based exporter. Uh, the pull-based exporter essentially, you know, it uh, exposes all the metrics on your metrics endpoint for your observability backend to scrape. And push-based uh, exporter will write all your metrics to your uh, remote write compatible backend. Uh, now let's start with configuring the uh, open telemetry collector for the uh, using the scrape configs, which is a native service discovery in Prometheus. Um, so here is how our open telemetry uh, CR or custom resource looks like. Here is a spec. So what we have here is we'll be deploying a, a collector in a stateful set mode um, uh, and uh, just one replica for now. Uh, and then under the uh, config here, we have the receivers as Prometheus. Um, so whatever uh, scrape configuration that we prepared earlier in, in the earlier section, we just put it over to this section. Um, so for simplicity, uh, I just, uh, the job that we are using here is an open telemetry uh, collector, monitoring the open telemetry collector job itself. So it will just monitor the help, health of the collector instance. And then under the exporter sections, we have a logging exporter. All the metrics will be logged in the console. And we also have the Prometheus and Prometheus remote write exporter. But for the purpose of this demo, uh, we'll be using the Prometheus receiver and the Prometheus remote write exporter. If you guys want to experiment with the uh, pull-based exporter, um, all you have to do is just uh, replace the Prometheus remote write under the metrics exporter section to Prometheus here. Now let's go ahead and apply this chart. Um, so this will essentially start a new collector instance as a stateful set uh, with uh, the native Prometheus discovery, I mean the, the native Prometheus scrape configs. So let me just copy paste this. All right, let's now see if the pods are up and running. Uh, so we see the collector instance up and running here. So we can, we should also be seeing the logs because we have the logging exporter configured. We should be seeing all the metrics in the uh, collector logs. So yeah, uh, so as you can see the collector uh, logs now have the uh, open telemetry uh, metrics. So we should, uh, we have a collector dashboard uh, set up on Grafana, so we should be seeing all those metrics on the Grafana dashboard. All 
All right, so here is the uh, collector dashboard. So we can see uh, the scrape job the, here, OTIL collector scrape job uh, that we just configured in the scrape config. Uh, and most of the other metrics are empty. Uh, we'll, we'll see more metrics coming in uh, as we go through the uh, rest of our uh, sections. All right, just going back. Um, so, so what we saw so far is we set up the collector for the uh, native Prometheus service discovery, right? So the next step is, um, the next section is we'll uh, uh, look into how do we scale the metrics pipeline using a component called target allocator. Uh, so in the previous section, we only, we deployed the collector as a stateful set and we only have one instance of the collector running. So now if we have to, scale the uh, collector instances. Um, uh, we cannot have the same scrape config in all the collectors, so it will end up double scraping uh, your uh, uh, metrics. So one option is you manually shard the targets and you, so you configure the replicas with uh, distinct scrape configs. Obviously, that is a very tedious process. So to, to simplify the process, uh, open telemetry uh, the operator introduces an optional component called target allocator. Uh, so tar the two essential functions of the target allocator is even distribution of targets across the collector instances. And the second is it also facilitates the discovery of Prometheus CRs that we saw earlier, which are the service and pod monitors. So here is a high level overview of uh, what the target allocator does. Uh, the first job of the target allocator is to discover the metrics targets. Uh, and then it will also discover all the available uh, collectors, and then it will use a consistent hashing algorithm to distribute all those, shard all those tar targets across the collectors. And then um, the open telemetry collector in turn it queries the uh, target allocator to get the metrics targets uh, to scrape. And finally, the open telemetry receiver uh, scrapes those uh, metrics endpoints. Um, so the second job, that, like I mentioned, it also facilitates the discovery of service and pod monitors and uh, then adds the job to the TS scrape configuration, which in turn adds the job to the collector uh, scrape configuration. So here is the CR, um, and we'll go through the notable changes that we made to the CR uh, uh, from our previous deployment. Uh, so here, now uh, you see the replicas are three, so we scale the collector instances. We also have a target allocator block uh, added here. Uh, we enable the target allocator and the sharding strategy that is being used is consistent hashing. We have two replicas for the, ta uh, for the target allocator for HA and resiliency of the target allocator deployment. If, if one goes down, you always have the other one to, um, to take the request. Uh, and we have the image and this, uh, here, Prometheus CR enabled true will essentially enable, uh, will facilitate the service discovery for the target allocator. So it, it uses, the, if, if this is enabled, uh, the target allocator will be able to uh, discover the, the targets using service monitors. And the other change is under the Prometheus section here, we have the target allocator uh, section. And here we actually configure the target allocator endpoint. Uh, that the collector uses to go fetch the scrape configs from. Now let's go ahead and apply the uh, the collector uh, stateful set with target allocator enabled. It will also create a cluster role that grants access to the target allocator to uh, uh, it, it grants uh, access to go fetch all these metrics. Um, now we applied the uh, chart. Now we should also apply the service monitors. And then let's see if the will take a let's see if the collector pods are up and running. Oh yeah, so here are uh, the uh, new collector uh, pods here, so the stateful set, three stateful sets, and we also have two uh, instances of the target allocator running. We had two replicas configured in our uh, uh, manifest. Um, so now uh, we should uh, start 
we should be we should now see all the prometheus metrics for our backend one service in our apps dashboard so under the apps dashboard we have a prometheus section here let's see uh, maybe it takes a while for it to yeah there you go um, so we see all the uh, metrics flowing now we see the dice numbers and we also see the dice number count and other metrics um, now let's go back uh, so where we are is like we, we we have seen the apps dashboard we all we also have a dashboard for see for seeing the collector uh, target allocator metrics Yeah, um, and then Anthony will take over and talk about the other two sections. Unfortunately, we have only five minutes. So um, maybe we should just do an overview or just skim through those parts. Is that fine? So just people know where to find it, but it's, it's all documented here. It's described so you can apply it yourself and see, but maybe just give a short overview. Yeah, so I, I think since we've got about four and a half minutes left, um, we'll open up to any questions. Uh, if anybody has any questions about what we've covered or um, anything else, uh, raise your hand. We'll get a microphone out to you. Uh, okay. Yes, you have a mic. How is this open telemetry is different than Azure uh, App Insight uh, providing SDKs, right? Uh, Azure App Insight is providing SDK, right? It is also collecting the logs and metrics, everything. Mm -hmm. So how it is different than that SDK? This so so that SDK, I'm not sure. I don't know the the, um, the SDK, the Azure SDK, but. Uh, it's probably similar, right? It provides you a way to create and send metrics and open telemetry. Why I would use one or the other? Uh, I would choose open telemetry because it allows me to switch the backends, right? I'm not tied to Azure. I can send metrics to Azure as well, but as well to Prometheus or other systems. It's, it's not vendor locking me to any specific, uh, you know, observability provider. SDK, actually, they, we can use that instrumentation key and uh, put it in your code. It's like collecting all custom logs and events, everything, and then send to App Insight. That SDK will work like that. So this is also almost working like that, right? But that yeah, is a like cloud-specific SDK, right? And if you want to switch the cloud yeah. and move to G a GCP, you would have to, again, re-instrument your applications with a different SDK. But with this, you can avoid all that. Yeah, Azure is the biggest contributor for this open telemetry. I don't know why they are spending on, again, they have the same SDK. Is there any difference with open telemetry and that SDK? I'm not sure. I don't think we know. Maybe even the Azure SDK is using open telemetry behind the scenes. Um, it's something. They are extending that. Yeah. But SDK is, the primary SDK is there with them to support in uh, the .NET and uh, Python. Node.js, they are not supporting in other languages, maybe because of that, they are introducing this one, open telemetry. I don't understand the question, sorry. So they are supporting only few languages, Okay. like uh, Python, Node.js, and um, .NET. They are not supporting other languages, like recent languages, Goline, or different, different one, and uh, it's not on Kubernetes, I think. Maybe that's why they are biggest contributor to this telemetry, open telemetry. Is that the reason they are doing? Well, so none of us work for Microsoft. I don't know that we can really speak yeah, to the, them. The um, as, <laughs> as an AWS employee, I know we provide the AWS distribution of open telemetry, um, which packages up the, the subset of components that we offer enterprise support for. Uh, I believe Microsoft is doing something similar, and, and Google is as well. Okay. Thank you. Okay, I think that's all the time we have.
right? Should we? There, there is one it? more question. If it's quick, maybe. Uh, this is regarding the Prometheus receiver that is uh, explained a little bit earlier. So. Uh, it is used to scrape the matrix and send it to Otel as a backend collector. Uh, my other question is, can we leverage this Prometheus receiver as an independent component, even with Prometheus ecosystem? Like, we can can we use it Prometheus receiver as a scrape and remote write target, and Prometheus server as a store? So the collector doesn't have any storage or querying capabilities, but you can use it as a Prometheus scraper and then use the Prometheus remote write exporter to direct the, the metrics that have been scraped to a Prometheus compatible target. Okay, cool. The other question I have is in terms of Otel collector, once it receives data from Prometheus receiver, does it do, do any replication or these are independent stateful sets that uh, don't coordinate with each other? Uh, yeah, so when you use the target allocator component of the open telemetry operator, what that will do is it effectively separates the service discovery mechanism from the collection. So the target allocator discovers all of the targets and knows all of the collectors that are running. And so it can allocate the targets between those collectors so that each target is only given to one collector. Um, that way uh, you won't be double scraping any of your targets or triple scraping depending on how many replicas you have. Uh, I understand that, but that is more around collecting uh, and sending data into the target collector. What I'm asking about is, Otel collector, can there be a replication uh, that can be set so that uh, if one of the Otel collector instances go down, we don't lose the data or something like that? Oh, so you, if you wanted to scrape twice each target and, and have multiple collectors scraping each target? No, no. So let's say Prometheus receiver or Otel receiver collects the data and sends it to the backend. Uh, the Otel collector that collects this data, uh, does it have any replication enabled or these are independent stateful sets? Uh, like a, a write-ahead log? Yeah. So the, the Prometheus remote write exporter has a write-ahead log and I believe there's a, a storage component uh, that some other exporters use for storing data before it's been sent out. Okay, so Otel Collector is primarily based on the same uh, wall and uh, other sorts of, uh, you know, uh, mechanisms how Prometheus works. Right, but that, that's only for persistence just before it gets exported. It doesn't do storage and querying. Okay, so there are some uh, uh, tools uh, or some uh, receivers like a Thanos receiver that does replication among multiple nodes. Uh, does Otel Collector have a roadmap to be I, on that state or do I you want don't to think it? so. The, the collector tries to be as stateful as possible so that you can scale it horizontally. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Yeah, I, I think we're already over time. So uh, thank you everyone. If you want to look at those more advanced topics, the fifth and sixth section, I invite you to look at them by yourself. If you're interested in joining, contributing, having more questions, you can also find us on the CNCF Slack. There is a dedicated channel for the operator, so feel free to ask there. And yeah, thank you for your attention.